So welcome again to today, today's webinar. Uh, my name is Amy Nye. I'm the Partnerships and Training Director. We're delighted today to be joined by our reporter, Palmer Gibbs, who will be walking us through uh, political party time, and also Jen Topper, our Communications Manager, who's a great resource for reporters who are interested in using our tools. Uh, so without further ado, I will pass this over to Palmer, who is going to walk us through uh, how to uncover political fundraisers using political party time. Hi, well, thank you for that introduction, Amy, and um, again, just welcome all of you. Uh, thank you for taking uh, some time this afternoon to uh, talk with us about political fundraising. Um, so I, my name is Palmer, and I run the uh, Political Party Time Project, and Party Time is one of Sunlight's money and politics tools um, that helps us to keep track of influence. So I'm going to go ahead and set up this screen share so that you all can, we can all kind of follow along. Um, all right, so uh, political party time, we, we, with the project, we collect fundraiser invitations and then go ahead and digitize the information that's found on them. So the group or the politician who the money will benefit, when the event is happening, who will be there, how much does it cost, all of those kinds of details. And so all of the information that is on the, the fundraiser itself, we go ahead and digitize that and get it put into a structured data format, which then allows people to um, more easily spot patterns and trends and also be able to interact with the data in a couple of different ways. And we'll go over some of that in just a, in just a little bit. So the Sunlight Foundation, um, as most of you know, you know, we're a nonpartisan, nonprofit government transparency advocacy organization, and we really pride ourselves on um, providing data in a variety of ways so that um, really anyone can interact with the information. And this specific tool, Political Party Time, is no different. So you can look at the data in a really digestible way on the front-facing site, um, which you're seeing right here, which is politicalpartytime.org. Um, so you can look at it, you know, on our site. Um, you know, say for example, you want to see what, um, you know, Right to Rise, uh, Right to Rise uh, Super PAC has been up to. So you can just type in Right to Rise Super PAC in this little search bar and see all of the different fundraisers that fundraiser events that have been happening for the Right to Rise Super PAC right here. Um, or so that's, that's the kind of, you know, way one, uh, the really you know, first level. Um, or you can go to our data slash API tab, and um, you can, you know, download the CSV of the, um, of the entire database and um, do your own sorts and filters. And that's at the very, very bottom. Sorry for the quick scroll. But down here you can do a download of, of, the, um, of, the, of the CSV. Um, and, and then for our newsroom developers, we also, as you can see from that initial scroll, um, have an API which will allow you to do, um, you know, more, more fancy pants stuff that, um, I'm, that I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know all of, the, all of the options that you all are able to do, but that's definitely an option. And, and I should also say that at the get-go, if, if, if there's anything that we're going over here and you're finding that you want to kind of dig in more, um, or you have some really specific questions, of course we can answer those um, in that chat function that Amy mentioned that's in this webinar, but you can also always feel free to reach out to us um, and we can go over specific questions um, or issues that you might have. So back to party time. We like to think of party time as kind of an early warning system for tracking political influence. Um, you know, a lot of the relationships that are developed at these fundraisers last throughout a person's political career and can really say a lot about a specific politician or even a lobbyist um, or maybe even, you know, an, an activist who's hosting, who's hosting an event. So, you know, what lobbying shop is throwing events for politicians? And if a politician, for example, is running as, you know, a quote-unquote Washington outsider, you know, if we look through some of the data that we house in political party time, you know, does that characterization, that self-characterization, does it really hold up if we're finding, you know, for example, that these politicians are having fundraisers with lobbyists in downtown D.C. and, you know, in K Street lobbying shops? So 
Party Time provides, the data in here, provides a lot of those great details which are fantastic for interesting anecdotes or a key data point in an overall political story. Um, for example, last fall, um, and I know that this is going back a little bit in, um, in the news cycle, but you know, last fall, Kentucky, in the Kentucky Senate race, Allison uh, Lundergan Grimes, she's a Democrat, she's running against Senator uh, Mitch McConnell, and she really ran as this Washington outsider. She ran as a grassroots candidate, and she said that Senator McConnell had been in D.C. for too long. This was a narrative that she really developed throughout her campaign. But then when we type in here, um, you, know, we look, you know, we look up Allison Lundergan Grimes, we can look through and see all of the different fundraising events that she had for her, um, for her campaign. And we'll notice that a lot of that, that she was spending a lot of time partying with people in the D.C. area, in Los Angeles, in the Bay Area, in New York. And so our data has, you know, 32 events for Allison Lundergan Grimes, but only nine of them were in her home state of Kentucky. So it's a really interesting data point, again, for political reporters who are hoping to create this kind of overall narrative. They might need, they might you know, need or want some sort of, you know, specific nugget there that can provide, um, that can really kind of help to color out, to, to fill in some of the blanks of that narrative. So let's go ahead and um, look at the tool itself. So um, there are a couple of ways, of course, to interact with, um, with the tool, with, with the website. Um, and one of the way, one of the ways in, Frankly, the way that I interact with it um, most often is I use this calendar um, tab, and this gives kind of a week-by-week -week, um, assessment of what's you know happening, um, what's happening, and um, it can always show some really interesting trends. So, for example, the congressional spring break um, was you know recently it was the end of March and into into April, and it lasted for two weeks. And we look if we look. Here, this is I'm showing you now the first week of the um, of of the of that spring break. Um, we see that there are no DC parties in week one or in week two. So those are the two. I just pulled up the two weeks of the political of I'm sorry of the uh, of that congressional spring break. There are no DC parties in those two weeks. That is you know, essentially unheard of. So much fundraising happens here right around, um, you know, the Hill, uh, on, you know, in the nation's capital on a regular basis. So then if we look at the first week, this is the first week after that congressional spring break, you can look back and see, bam, look at all of those District of Columbia <laughs> addresses. Politicians are right back at it. They're they're right back on Capitol Hill, and they are partying up a storm already. Um, you know, with um, you know, with on right just a few steps away from Capitol Hill. So fundraisers, what we see there too is that fundraisers are still happening during that spring break, but they're happening out and about. You know, maybe it's in a member's district, or maybe it's a long weekend retreat. And as, but as soon as Congress is back in session, members are back in D.C. and they're raising money. Again, these are the kinds of things that can help to kind of fill out that larger narrative of how the, you know, political fundraising game really just never stops. You know, we see here that Representative Glenn Grossman out of Wisconsin, he had a lunch at the Capitol, um, at the Capitol Hill Club, on Monday, on the Monday right after spring break, so you know, just a few hours, <laughs> a few hours after they're all, um, you know, back, the Congress is back in session. Representative Grossman is having, um, you know, is having his event, um, and you can see here, those are some of the details and things. Um, so as you can see there, I clicked on the event itself, and that is going to get you to the page that um, shows you all of the details about about the fundraiser. So this is the fundraiser. Right now you're looking at the fundraiser invite itself. But if you show, go up here, these are going to be some of the, structure, the pieces of structured data that we're going to include when you do that CSV download. Um, and um, any of these things that kind of have that, you know, uh, that have that ability to, to link through, 
um, you can click on that and, um, and kind of interact with, with the data in a different way. So for example, if I were to click on this Glenn Grothman, this would come up and it would show you, this page would come up and it would show you um, what other events he's had for um, his campaign committee. And then if you were to click through um, on that other page, click through on the Capitol Hill Club, you would see this is all of the, these are all of the events that have taken place in the Capitol, at the Capitol Hill Club. We've got 103 pages of them. <laughs> so it's a very popular place. And one of the reasons that it's so popular um, is that it's just like literally across the street from the Capitol. Um, so another way that we can go ahead and interact with, um, with the tool is if we, um, we can search, we can use the search bar to search for a specific politician or group. So in this, for this example, what I've queued up here is I've done a search for Gwen Moore, a Democratic representative out of Wisconsin. And this is the page that comes up. So you can see that we've written about her a little bit, and we've got, um, these are the two um, committees. Uh, uh, which she raises money for. So if you click on that initial one, that Gwen Moore, this is going to get you to um, that her official um, campaign committee. And we can see that so far we have 52 party time events for her. Um, and any of these, if you wanted to, you could click on see invite and that would take you to that page that would have, and I'll just um, click on that right now. So if you if you click on the invite, you can go to that page and it'll get you all of that information about the event itself, including um, the uh, the actual physical invite that we got that we have there. Um, and then if you go through to say Gwen Pack, if you click on Gwen Pack, that'll show you the events um, that she has held for her leadership committee. So the Gwen Pack is is Representative Moore's uh, leadership committee, and, and these are the events um, that she's had benefiting that committee. So that's easy enough to do when there's a, it's a member already in office or it's a member who's already, it's, it's a politician who's already declared that he or she is running for president. Um, things get a little bit tricky with um, when we start to look at the universe of um, super PACs, PACs, groups that um, you know aren't um, that for candidates who haven't declared yet. So, for example, we get a lot of calls about you know, oh well, how, what is you know, who has Jeb Bush been having fundraisers with and things. But you can't just type in um, Jeb Bush into um, you know into that search bar because since he hasn't he hasn't uh, announced yet, he's not officially a candidate. So you have to type in right to rise since those are the, um, all of the money that he's raising is going to those groups. So if you do a search for right to rise in here, again, you'll see these blog posts and you'll scroll down and see these are the two committees, the right to rise PAC, that's going to be his leadership PAC, and the right to rise super PAC, obviously that's his PAC, his super PAC. And if we click here on Right to Rise PAC, if you click on there, these, this is a list of all of the events that he's done for his leadership PAC. And then if you go, you click through to Right to Rise Super PAC, these are going to be all of the events that benefit his Super PAC committee. And these are those events that we've heard a lot about, you know, with the $100,000 ticket price for a breakfast fundraiser, um, et cetera, et cetera. These are going to be the really high dollar um, fundraiser events. So he has two events today um, for his Super PAC, actually, um, in Oregon. Um, and they're listed, as you can see on this list. Um, right here. So these are the two events. So um, we can click through here on see invite and this is going to be for that dinner. And so as I mentioned before, here is the, sorry about that, here's the fundraiser invite. 
And what we've gone ahead and done is taken all of this information um, and put it back into our structured data format. So, um, for example, up here, all of these people who are listed up here, these are called hosts. We've typed in all of our, um, and, and, and being a host of a party, I should also say, you know, that means that you've given uh, a certain amount of money or you've committed to giving a certain amount of money or raising a certain amount of money for the group. Um, and we go ahead and put their names into our database. And this allows us to kind of keep track of how um, different people are um, contributing over time um, to, different, to different members um, or to different candidates. So then if you go, um, if you go up here, you can see that all of these hosts um, are, have uh, essentially, or, or you can you can link out to them. So you can click on you can click on their names and see who else they uh, they have um, hosted parties for. So as we can see, this this event is at the home of Stephen and Melissa Babson in Portland, Oregon. If we go ahead and click on their names here we'll see all of the other events that this couple has hosted. And so, you know, who else have they been partying with? You can see that there are um, a list of other hosts, so you can kind of not only make connections between hosts and politicians, politicians, but hosts with other hosts. Um, and that's particularly important, say, in um, some, like somewhere like Hollywood, where um, there very much are um, industry trends where, you know, um, one significant, you know, or famous person in, in the industry can kind of corral all of their friends to, to, to join on. Um, we see that, like I said, specifically a lot of times in, in Hollywood. Um, but for this specific couple, we can see that this is the um, fourth um, party that they've played, that they've, you know, signed on to to host for the Right to Rise Super PAC. It's the fourth party in just two days. Um, Jeb Bush has, has headlined these two events, two events in Seattle yesterday and two events in Portland today. Um, and you can see that, um, that they played host on all four of those, of, of those events on the Pacific Northwest. Now, if you scroll down, you can see that they're also Mitt Romney supporters, which is really, really interesting. Um, so they've, um, you know, they've been hosts for events for his joint, for Romney's Joint Fundraising Committee, that's this Romney Victory Inc., for um, just his regular, regular presidential committee, the, you know, Mitt Romney for President, and then also for um, Mitt Romney's Leadership PAC, which is called Free and Strong America PAC. So, you know, they've got this long, first of all, they've got this long record um, of supporting Republican candidates for president, um, and, they, and they were Romney supporters. Um, and so if we click through on another host that was listed on that Right to Rise Super PAC fundraiser event, Patricia and David Nirenberg, we're going to notice a similar trend here. They signed on to host those four parties that, are, that were in, you know, for, for Right to Rise, those two that were in Seattle yesterday and the two that are in Portland today. And we'll notice, too, that they also signed on to the same parties for uh, Mitt Romney when he was running for president back in 2012. So there are a lot of questions and a lot of stories and a lot of, you know, kind of, again, wanting to develop an, this, you know, this narrative, um, but a lot of questions about who will Romney's backers, you know, support in this really crowded uh, Republican primary. So there's a lot of GOP candidates. Romney raised a ton of money in 2012, and everybody wants to know kind of how those supporters are going to line up this year. There's been this big, you know, hustle for all of, for, you know, collecting Romney's supporters, because that would therefore mean collecting a lot of their money as well. And so, these can be important data points. You know, there are a lot of things that, that where we can know, you know, we kind of, as political reporters, you know, kind of instinctively we know that Romney supporters are going toward this person or this person or this person. They're kind of peeling off. But this can actually, you know, our database can really provide some concrete data points 
about about how to really about how to really prove this and how to really kind of um, as I said, kind of color in all of the pieces of that narrative. So if we go back to that original, um, th this invite for that dinner that I was talking about that's tonight in Portland, Oregon. And right here we go to this other lawmakers mentioned. If we click here on former Governor Jeb Bush, That will get us to this page. And this is a really powerful page. Um, and unfortunately, that's really the only way that you can kind of navigate to it because, like I said at the outset, you can't just type in Jeb Bush and have this page come up. You do kind of have to navigate through a couple of, a couple of, um, of, of different pages and tabs in there. That being said, this is a really powerful page. Um, because this shows the list of events that Jeb Bush has headlined. So now this is going to include events that he has headlined for his own super PAC and his own leadership PAC. We're seeing that right here in this little section. But it also includes fundraisers that he's headlined for other people and other groups. As you can see, this is obviously going to be a, you know, pretty significant event that's happening in May. He's headlining a, the Lincoln Dinner for the Iowa Republican Party. That's a really big deal. Iowa, you know, early primary state, um, well, caucus state, excuse me. Um, but, you know, by showing up at these kinds of events, first of all, that really is, um, you know, an indicator that, you know, he's running for president, he's very interested, he's trying to maneuver his way. Um, with support, with all of you know, with, um, among among uh, constituents out in, in in these early voting states, but it's also a, a great way to get support from local politicians um, and to really you know press the flesh with voters and um, and potential donors in these states. So if we kind of look through, like if we kind of you know dig in here a little bit, we can see that in March, Bush uh, headlined you know, two fundraisers in New Hampshire. So he headlined a fundraiser for Representative Frank Ginta. That was at the Manchester, Man Manchester Country Club. And then we see the next day, he headlined a closed door fundraiser for Senator Kelly Ayotte um, in Bedford, New Hampshire. So these are, you know, good examples of, um, of Jeb Bush going to an early primary state, um, again, trying to get in good with those local politicians, you know, when it comes time to, when, when it comes time to, um, you know, make endorsements in those, in those early primaries, um, this is going to be a really, you know, these kinds of relationships that are developed, of course, I'm not saying that Senator Iote is for sure going to, you know, back Jeb Bush in a primary or anything, but um, he's clearly, Bush is clearly making overtures to these local New Hampshire politicians so that when it does come time to, um, you know, to make, to make these endorsements, it's going to be a lot easier to say, remember when we did that fundraiser together? Would you, you know, <laughs> would you, would you give me that, in, would you give me that endorsement? That's going to, you know, these are the kinds of relationships that I was talking about. Um, and we also see that later that same week, that was, you know, Jeb Bush has been really, really busy. He's been um, just really all over the place, raising money, as I said, for himself and for other groups. But later that same week, he was in South Carolina. Um, and he did a, a, a fundraiser for the South Carolina House Republican Caucus um, down in, in, in Columbia, South Carolina. And again, this is the you know first primary state in the South, um, you know early voting state, um, and it really just uh, continues to, to fill out that narrative that a he's running for president and b he's going he's doing his his darndest to generate a lot of support um, among among those um, among those early state voters and do and donors because you have to remember that the people who are attending these events are the people who can afford that you know that ticket price that you know granted it it as you can see
see here, this contribution information, it starts at $60, but it goes all the way up to $2,500. Um, and so he's going to want to um, you know, spend time with, hang out with, become a familiar face with people who are able to write those kinds of checks. So there's plenty of indicators you know, that Jeb Bush is going to run for president, but these visits to early voting states, they're always good nuggets. So when we get closer to the primaries, you know, we, can, we can tally up how many times, you know, how many times has, has Jeb Bush been to New Hampshire? How many times has he been to South Carolina? How many times has he been to Iowa? We can tally these things up and then we can compare them to other candidates. Um, and these are, again, these are these data points that can really buttress some of the more relational pieces of political reporting that, again, we can kind of instinctually know, but that are really hard to quantify. And that's obviously, you know, what we need, what we need to do, what we need to make sure to do. So we can also use the search bar to um, look up a specific host. Um, and so in here, um, I typed in the search bar for Bobby Kilberg. And, you know, this is a particularly, um, she's a particularly influential fundraiser and bundler. She worked um, with President George W. Bush and President George H. W. Bush. She was a bundler for Mitt Romney. Um, she lives in McLean, Virginia uh, with her husband, Bill. And they, as you can see, host a lot of fundraisers at their home. Um, and there's going to, there's, Again, kind of what I was talking about earlier with that narrative on, you know, where are Romney fundraisers, where, where are his supporters kind of going to fall out? Um, you know, there's been a lot of interest in where, um, in, in, in who uh, Bobby Kilberg and Bill Kilberg, who they're going to support. And so it's interesting because she's, you know, worked in two Bush administrations, but we can see right here that in May, She's going to be headlining, um, I'm sorry, she's going to be hosting a fundraiser for Leadership Matters for America, which is Chris Christie's PAC. Um, and so that's, um, so, that, so that's a really interesting, um, so that's a really interesting, you know, development. Um, can I ask any, ask if, does anybody have any questions so far for us to, to go over? That's um, a pretty, quick and dirty overview of the tool, and I'd like to go over some of the other, um, you know, stories that we've done um, and ways that you can kind of use the data, but does anybody have any questions on the overview of it? I know, Palmer, you sort of mentioned a little bit of, uh, about our the invitations, but I was wondering if we can talk a little bit more about how do, you, how do we get the invitations? Sure. And the process of getting them up online. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, thanks for asking that. I always put that at the end, but that can sometimes get really lost. Um, so we get um, our fundraiser invitations from um, uh, a number of different sources. We have a couple of lobbyist friends who, um, you know, pass them along to us, um, and we also get them from um, from journalists and from. Um, Frankly, just from regular old news alerts that kind of give us a heads up that something's coming, you know, coming down the pike. And so, all that being said, um, for those of you who are out and about listening to this webinar, um, we are always looking for ways to build more, to build that source list, and to, um, you know, get more, get more fundraiser invites into our system. So. Um, you know, we always tell people, you know, write your write your exclusive story. Um, you know, put up, put up your fundraiser, write that story. We we are we are less interested in in getting a scoop on an event um, than we are on on getting um, on having a full and complete uh, database. So, write that story and then send us that invite. <laughs> um, we always are looking for more, and our email address is partytime at sunlightfoundation.com. Um, and you can also upload things, um, whether you, know, you would like to upload things or if you're talking with sources and they're interested in, in helping out the project, they can upload things at politicalpartytime.org slash upload. And that is a, um, that's a, um, those are, uh, it's a completely anonymous um, process. So here's the upload page. Um, sorry about that. Here's the upload page. It's really simple. You click 
choose file and then click upload. <laughs> um, or you can email us, as you can see there's that email address right there. We never reveal our sources. Um, we, the, the people who run this organization, we are journalists, um, or run, I'm sorry, run this, <laughs> run this project. Um, we're reporters and we're um, you know, very good at keeping our sources close, uh, close to our, our chest, so we don't, we don't share that information. Um, with anyone else, so you can always feel comfortable, um, you know, uh, sharing with us, and and that won't get beyond. So, any other questions? Um, okay, cool. We'll keep them coming if you have them. So, some of the. Oops. I'm sorry. This is that fundraiser for Leadership Matters for America. Um, so. In-house, we've been able to do, um, obviously, some you know, interesting stories with this data. So I do a weekly roundup, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, where I just kind of look at, um, look at all of the you know, upcoming fundraisers and kind of try to spot at least some sort of trend or story arc that's happening that week. It can, you know, if there's a, we've been having a lot of these, you know, not, last weekend we had this, um, First in the nation, you know, full day confab um, up in New Hampshire. Just about every Republican who is talking about maybe thinking about possibly wondering about asking a question about maybe running for president, he or she was there and hanging out in New Hampshire, shaking hands and raising money for the helping to raise money for the New Hampshire Republican Party. Again, what a great way to really. Um, collect a lot of goodwill and support um, that will really kind of help out down the line. Um, so I, I do a lot of those weekly, as I said, weekly roundups. Um, that can all, all, of, all of our um, work here can be, found on the, um, can be found on the blog, that blog tab. Um, but, you know, when certain people kind of pop up in the news, we definitely like to um, look at what their, you know, fundraising habits have been. So, you know, when uh, all of the all of the stuff started kind of cropping up about Representative Aaron Schock out of Illinois, we decided, let's see, you know, he's obviously got some champagne taste. Let's see where he's been um, holding fundraisers. And so we, um, you know, dug into our data and, um, you know, looked at at some of the um, at some of the places and, and ways in which he's been you know and ways ways in which he's been having um, fundraisers. Um, so um, we just kind of as I said we just kind of did a did a, a quick roundup. One of our favorites, as you can tell here, was this shock and sushi and spirits for St. Patrick's Day. It was a luncheon reception. Um, we thought that that was a particularly funny and um, Frankly, odd invite, um, <laughs> but uh, we always we always like to, to highlight those. So um, another example, you know, Senator Rand Paul, he announced that he's going to be running for president. Um, and when he did that, we went ahead and looked at where he's been fundraising. And so we found that um, you know that that since September 2011. Um, Paul has headlined 75 events for other people, and that um, nine of those were in Iowa and nine of those were in New Hampshire. And so, again, this is that you know that that kind of stuff. I know I sound a bit like a broken record, but this is the kind of stuff that can really help to to fill out that narrative of yeah, Rand Paul has been interested in running for president for a long time, and he's been traveling to those early primary and voting states. Um, quite often and really, um, you know, getting in good with um, some of the local politicians and local donors and, and, and people there. Um, in, we did a much larger project in September 2013 when we celebrated um, Party Time's five-year anniversary or birthday. Um, and so we did a big roundup of trends, which I will kind of scroll through here. Um, so this is kind of our overall um, look at what we've what at what we kind of found. Um, so we found that there were you know almost 18,000 total invites in party time, um, and 
the top three music acts, you know, that there were 155 concert fundraisers and the top three, um, you know, fundraiser, uh, top three concert uh, where, where fundraisers happened were with Bruce Springsteen, Taylor Swift, and Jay-Z. And I will tell you that we already have two fundraisers in our database for Taylor Swift's upcoming concert um, at Nat Stadium this summer, so the trend just continues. Um, we've got a lot of, you know, as you can see, we did a lot of interesting, um, you know, kind of deep dives in, in with some of this data. We found that fundraisers um, happen, you know, more in August and September because that's closer to when the, you know, actual elections are happening, and that Wednesdays are a really popular time to um, have fundraisers because, um, because that's when pretty much everybody is, when Congress is in session, that's kind of when everybody is on Capitol Hill. Um, and then we went ahead and took some of the, um, you know, address and location information um, in our political party time database and mapped out um, where fundraisers were happening. So you can see that, as I mentioned, most of them are happening right around um, in Washington, D.C. And then this is below it, is shows kind of a, a density map. Um, so you can see how closely, as I was mentioning before, you know, members really want to fundraise right off the hill because, you know, we, we found that a lot of, a lot of people, um, they, will, they will, you know, have a vote and then they will go to a fundraiser and then they will have a meeting and then they will have another fund <laughs> fundraiser. So we really find that, that politicians, when they're doing that, they're not allowed to fundraise um, in, you know, in, the, in, their, in their offices. Um, but they do it just, you know, right across the street. They want to be really efficient, <laughs> efficient with that money raising. Um, and so we also, uh, so these are some of the things that we've done, you know, in-house, like with, you know, with our Sunlight, um, all of the great, resource, great, great resources that Sunlight has, where, whether it's with our, you know, reporting confab or, if, you know, we enlist the help of our designers or our developers to kind of help us. Um, manipulate and, and work with this data a little bit to do some kind of cool stuff. So those are some things that we've done in-house. And of course we help um, other outlets when they have questions about how can they use the data. Um, so you know, if, if it's somebody, if you're a, you know, a, a local reporter and you're hoping to cover somebody on your beat um, and you, know, you're, you need help um, looking at the data, whether that's a specific politician or say a region or something, we're always happy to help with those kinds of things. Um, earlier this year, we worked with um, a woman in New Jersey who, um, her name's Carla, and um, she's a reporter up in New Jersey, as I mentioned, and she did this great um, interactive um, where she kind of looked through um, all of the uh, different fundraisers that we had on hand um, for New Jersey politicians. So a lot of those were Chris Christie, um, but there were also other, um, other, you know, more, um, uh, sorry, congressional, congressional um, members as well. And so this was a, a great story that she worked on um, where she um, pulled in using, using our data. Um, and these are some of the top lines that she kind of that she kind of found out um, from there. And so we're happy to work with things like that. Um, last September, we worked with BuzzFeed when some of the stuff was um, when some of the stuff with the NFL was kind of popping. When that was very newsy, we worked with a BuzzFeed reporter to see how connected the NFL is with political fundraising, and we found plenty, frankly. Um, you know, including that the New York Jets owner, Woody Johnson, he's hosted 12 parties since 2011 and all for Republican candidates. Um, and so we, we're able to kind of find some, you know, interesting nuggets like that um, for, you know, kind of, kind of for whatever your beat is. If, you're, if you are just looking for something kind of fun and quirky and different, or if you are looking for somebody specific or you're looking for a specific host, we're always happy to do that kind of stuff. Um, just a couple of other details with the tool itself. Um, you're able to, um, it's possible to set up alerts 
um, so that you can get an email every time that Party Time um, gets a fundraiser invite for someone. So if we go back to that original, you know, way back example of Representative Glenn Moore out of Wisconsin, um, this is her, um, her page for her campaign committee. Um, you can see right here this create an alert um, uh, button. And if you click on that, that'll send you to Scout, which is um, another sunlight tool. And here's that. Um, and if you, I don't know, is that very well. Um, so this will kind of um, this will kind of ask you, um, you know, do you want to get party time events for Gwen Moore, um, political parties for Gwen Moore from the Sunlight Foundation, and then you can kind of see. So it lets you kind of double check and make sure that you're that you're actually signing up for the thing that you want to sign up for. Um, and then it'll give you some examples, as you can see down here, of kind of the most recent things. Um, so if you go ahead and just click on alert here. I'm sorry, create alert here. It'll just um, ask you to put in your email address um, and you just do that. And then every time we get an invite for Representative Moore, you will get, um, you'll get an email and, a, and a, little, uh, a little alert will come through. And that'll just kind of, um, you know, can kind of help you to, to keep on top of, um, of events that are happening for, you know, a member that you're covering. Um, and that's always a good way to, again, kind of see those trends really quickly. Um, and so as I mentioned before from, um, with, with Amy's question, you know, the, the information in our database, it's collected from anonymous sources and news clippings. And um, as most of you probably know, you know, this information does not have to be disclosed. Um, so all of the, um, all of the, the the information and, and invites that we get here, this is all from sources that we've cultivated, from um, journalists who we've reached out to and said, hey, you just wrote a story. I've probably emailed some of you on, who are on this call right now. Um, but, you know, hey, you wrote this story. What a great, you know, that's a great story. Would you be willing to share your invite with us? We promise we won't let, you know, anybody know who got it, who we got it from, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so we're always looking for ways to really, um, you know, uh, really uh, fill out this, fill out the data set. So, and again, not interested in scoops. Um, we are m more interested in a complete, in a complete data set than anything else. So you can upload those invites um, if you go to this contact page. Again, as I mentioned before, it's politicalpartytime.org/upload. Or you can email us, that's partytime at sunlightfoundation.com. Um, and one other thing to mention, um, since it isn't a, um, since, since the information doesn't, it isn't a required uh, disclosure, that means that the data that we have is, is nowhere near complete. It really is the tip of the iceberg um, in terms of how much fundraising is actually going on and these are and this is you know we're collecting the fundraiser events themselves the the, in, the invites themselves um, but it's there's just really no way that, that this is that it's complete um, there are way more fundraisers happening out there that we don't know about that aren't included in here and that's of course why we are always trying to get more fundraiser invites um, but it's always just important to keep that in mind as we talk about this data that it is the, you know, we're the only repository that collects all of this, um, that collects all of these. So we're, um, we probably have um, some of the, the better numbers on, on how much fundraising is going on. But again, it, it isn't 100% it isn't, um, um, complete. So that's always a good thing to keep in mind. Um, and we can always use, your, use those fundraiser invites. So please, please share. Um, and if you um, have specific questions or anything, um, we are always happy to um, to talk with talk with you all. Um, I am happy to answer questions right now. Um, and as Amy mentioned at the beginning, Jen Topper is our communications manager. She's at jtopper at sunlightfoundation.com. And then my email right up there is pgibbs at sunlightfoundation.com. Any of us are, um, would definitely be more than happy to help you with, um, with any questions that you might have. If you want to go you know, into, more, into more depth or have something specific. But um, 
we're happy to take questions about the tool now if, if anybody has them. And just as a reminder, you can hit uh, star seven to unmute your phone and you can ask uh, Palmer a question. What's, what's your most interesting story that you have written using part-time data? Ooh, I was not prepared for that question. Um, <laughs> I actually, um, I actually think that it's really interesting to look um, kind of retrospectively at what people have kind of, um, at how people have kind of um, fundraised throughout their career. So I really like the stories like that Aaron Shock one that I mentioned and the Rand Paul story that I mentioned um, because it really, um, I mean, it really shows that um, how people, you know, uh, really their trends and if they really do have it, you know, have an eye on 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 higher office and things. Um, I think you can see a lot of that. Um, uh, through the through, through through a lot of those a lot of those trends and a lot of the data that we collect so um, so I always think it's interesting to kind of see where people have been hanging out who they've been partying with that kind of thing um, um, you know I'm a reporter so I'm a sucker for trends um, <laughs> <laughs> so I love to be able to kind of say oh it's you know like I said like you know Rand Paul's been to Iowa nine times and New Hampshire nine times you know nine times each since you know. 2011, like obviously he's been wanting to run <laughs> run for president since the get go. So I would think that that those are those are the really interesting nuggets. Great. Um, so I doesn't, it doesn't seem like there are any questions uh, online or on the phone, uh, and we don't want to keep keep folks on on the webinar. Thank you so much for spending an hour, almost an hour, with us today and learning a little bit more about political party time. And thank you so much to Palmer and Jen here uh, who helped put this together. Um, and uh, their contact information is on the screen uh, right now. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them an email. And uh, looking forward to seeing what else uh, party time is able to dig up. So thank you again, and thank you so much for joining us.